City Live. Today we're back with another Best Beginner Pet Reptile episode. And Skunky yes. Monkey. Yes. You're out of control. Ah! <laughs> He's an animal. <laughs> Highly recommend cat snakes. <laughs> These are my favorite kinds of snakes. <laughs> Go crazy. Go crazy. Ferret life. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> and and we're, we're back. back. <laughs> so we're going to talk about some really good beginner pet snakes and some not so good beginner pet snakes. So today we're here at Extreme Exotics, the reptile shop where I work in Jacksonville, Florida. And I would say two of the most common pet snakes that we see people get are boas and ball pythons. So I'm gonna give you the pros and cons of each. So the crazy thing about red tail boas is that they start this little. But depending if they're male or female, they grow up to be six to 10 feet long. So this one, for example, is probably about two years old and not even close to full grown. But one cool thing about the boas, they do come in some really cool colors. So this gray one here is your normal red tail boa coloring. And this tan one is one of the hypos that we have. It's an absolutely beautiful snake. And it's crazy to think these little babies will grow up to be so big. And this is a hypo that's just a little bit older. Really pretty snake. So I just stopped in at home because I wanted to show you one of my favorite boas that I have. This is a sun glow boa. It's a type of albino and just an absolutely gorgeous snake. So the snake that we probably see the most often as a pet is a ball python. And ball pythons undoubtedly come in the most variety of colors and different patterns. The only thing that I hesitate in recommending a ball python as a beginner pet snake is that they do have a little more sensitivity to heat and humidity. So these guys come from Africa, they like it hot and humid. So as long as you set your ball python up correctly, shouldn't have any issues. We always recommend juvenile ball pythons be set up in a minimum of a 40 gallon tank. And there is so much debate about putting ball pythons in a smaller space because too large of a space they stress out. Well, let me tell you that Africa is not the size of a shoebox. So what we recommend is a 40 gallon setup that is cluttered with accessories, multiple hide spaces, lots of foliage and fake plants and branches, trees, things they can hide in, things that make them feel secure because they are not left out in the open. Now, if you were to do a 40 gallon setup with just two hide caves and a water bowl, you may have a stressed out ball python, but I don't think it's fair to take an animal this size and put it in a 10 gallon tank and say, oh, it's gonna be happier there. Again, Africa is not the size of a shoebox. So maybe you could start a baby ball python in a 20 gallon, fill it with lots of accessories, but we usually go straight to a 40 gallon. It gives the snake room to grow for at least a year. We fill it full of stuff that they can hide in and we have had great success with that. We also recommend that you have a hot side and a cool side for every snake setup. And with ball pythons in particular, we like the hot side to be somewhere between 90 and 92 degrees. And usually the cool side falls somewhere between 75 and 80. We also also do not recommend aspen bedding for ball pythons. Aspen bedding is very dry. It holds zero humidity. So we use Zoomed Cypress Mulch and it holds humidity really well. You can see it here on the inside of the bags, how humid it is. And we find that that lends to having really good humidity in the enclosure and it allows the snake to have the humidity they need to shed in one solid piece. It's really important to be aware that if your snake is shedding in little patches and little pieces, the humidity is probably too low and you want them to shed in one nice solid piece. So it's a good way to judge your humidity and we have found that this mulch does really well at helping with that. So boas, we don't keep as hot as ball pythons. So for me, I keep my boas personally around 85 to 86 degrees on the hot side. And I also use the cypress mulch because again, it holds great humidity and my snakes shed in one solid piece every single time. Now, if you're looking for something that stays smaller than the boas and the red tails, I would highly recommend a hog nose. I love these little guys. I've had hog noses my whole life. They are a really cute snake and they max out anywhere from 15 to 24 inches, depending if it's male or female. Females get bigger. But this is one animal that we would use 
aspen sand a dry bedding so these guys we do not keep on the mulch now hog noses are a rear fang venomous snake and a lot of people freak out and they're like oh my gosh i can't have a venomous snake in my house uh, but it's really not like that so the rear fang venom means the venom's in the back so they do have to chew on something to inject it and it's a very mild venom and you can see why they are called hog noses they do have this little pig snout on the front really cute faces on these guys okay so this is my best recommendation for a beginner pet snake is a corn snake so this is a full-grown creamsicle corn snake which just refers to the coloring these guys come in all kinds of really cool colors as well really neat patterns but they are some of the most awesome snakes i use these for all of my educational shows school shows kids birthday parties so this is a type of albino it's a really pretty snake they start really small and they grow to five or six feet long but this is as thick as they get so they don't eat a huge meal a huge rat anything crazy like that and they tend to be really docile now because they do get five to six feet you've got a plan for an enclosure that can house a five to six foot snake but it's a big impressive snake that's really easy to handle versus a five to six foot boa that's a lot bigger around and a lot stronger than a corn snake the other great thing about an adult corn snake versus an adult boa is that a bite from an adult corn snake is gonna hurt a lot less than a bite from an adult boa this guy is technically for sale right now, but I really don't want to sell him. I have a corn snake in just about every color. I have an orange one, I have a white one, I have a red one, I have one that's literally polka dotted. So these guys are just one of my absolute favorites and probably what I would list as my absolute number one most recommended beginner pet snake. And I don't care how beginner they are, they will always be one of my favorite snakes. This is a super cool corn snake. What's this one? This is a little annery corn snake. Now another snake that I think is overlooked a lot that I would recommend is a milk snake or a king snake. Candy cane here. Candy cane's about 15 years old and he's an Arizona mountain king snake. And this is as big as he will get. This is one of my favorite king snakes. This is a Mexican black king snake. Solid black, beautiful animal doesn't get very big averages about three feet and just a stunning snake and this is what we do not recommend as your beginner snake this is our new caramel burmese python very pretty snake really beautiful coloring but not even full grown yet so this is already for me a two-person snake and it's just gonna get bigger and that is why we do not recommend this as your beginner snake. Now in terms of other snakes that I don't recommend as your beginner pet snake, I would not recommend a green tree python. They are definitely a more advanced snake. They're an arboreal snake, but they're also very fragile. Not a snake that you should handle a lot when you have one. And they can have up to a hundred teeth or more inside their mouth. So a bite from one of these guys can do some damage. He's starting to wake up, so we're gonna leave him alone. I also would not recommend a female boa constrictor because let's be honest, how many of us can adequately house an eight to 10 foot snake that's as big around as your head? This is what we also do not recommend as a beginner pet snake. And thanks for joining us on another episode of Sabrina's Wild Side. In life, there are times